All right. Bell has been delivered and sold me insurance. Not time for me to preach. <laughs> Happy Memorial Day. On this day, we remember and celebrate those men and women who have fought and died for this country. How many veterans we got here? There's one, two, three. Anybody else? Four, five. We're going to church today. Quite a few. Thank you for your service to this country. I was going to uh, preach another sermon, uh, especially for Memorial Day, but God said, no, I, I, I want to go with another sermon on this discipleship. But today is a, a message. It's the second in a series of three messages on disciples. But they do tie together, Memorial Day and disciples. Uh, today we honor men and women who've lost their lives and died for their country died defending a belief, following a constitution they honored, following their convictions. They sacrificed their lives and they died for service. Disciples of Christ honor their master and his constitution, his word, his Bible. They follow their convictions, sacrifice their lives, and like the men and women of the military, died for their beliefs. Disciples died for the convictions and beliefs. And in a recent message on the cost last week, on the cost of discipleship, uh, we spoke about it. If you're a truly a disciple of Christ in your life, it could lead you down the same road it led Jesus, ending at the cross. And that takes commitment. Many times I've told Vicki, I hope by the time I reach the time that God says it's time to come home, I'm decision has been that it is time for me to die. I hope that it finds me serving Jesus. I hope that it sees me sacrificing my life for the cause like the men and women we honor and remember on this week. I want to read a little passage from uh, Churchill and see if you can see the connection between the military and disciples of Christ. It was during the time before the America got into World War II, Churchill said this, we are resolved to destroy Hitler and every vestige of the Nazi regime. From this, nothing will turn us. Nothing. We will never parlay. We will never negotiate with Hitler or any of his gang. We shall fight him by land. We shall fight him by sea. We shall fight him by air. Until, with God's help, we have rid the earth of his shadow. I read that and I thought, you know what? If disciples of Christ would have that same commitment, we're going to stand against the evil warfare. We're going to stand against abortion. We're going to stand against people who do not follow Christ. And it may cost us our life. But you know what? When we do it, we're honoring God. Just like we remember and honor the men of, and women of on Memorial Day. So with that being said, good morning again. And happy Memorial Day. Welcome to Mount Olive Cumberland Presbyterian Church. We always say you'll hear that on ESPN one day. <laughs> Where God is building this church. Where God is building this church in us and through us. Remember that, in us and through us. You're going to thank me one day because you're going to say, you know, I love that pastor. Made me remember that the, the church is not the building. The church is us. God is building his church in us and through us. Someday you're going to say, I love that fat little guy talking that. But who is God's church? We are. We are. Say it with me. Who's God's church? We are. Hmm. Be proud. We are God's church. We are his walking and talking testimony to the world in his honor. Never forget that. It is a privilege and honor to bring God's message to you today. I'm always humbled. As I realize I have this offer from God to bring you his message. I hope you're just as humble to know that God is bringing it to you. He is in this building today. He wants you to keep your hearts open because he wants to speak to you. Last week we received a message from God on being a disciple and the cost of being a disciple. People need to know even before they're saved, what is the cost of being a disciple for Christ? This is a part of the journey, part of the investigation of who is this Jesus? Is he the Messiah? Is he worthy of my worship? 
And when you come to that answer, that's when you bow before Him and say, please save me. Forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. But it's a part of the journey. Hopefully that first message, you and you let that message sink into your heart. For those of you who have not received the offer of salvation uh, by God through Jesus Christ, I hope you will find that answer today. And you will bow before Christ and allow Him into your heart. This is the first step of becoming a disciple for Christ. Last week's message, again, was a first part of a three-part sermon series on discipleship and disciples. Today I want to follow that message up with a clear understanding of what is a disciple. Next week we're going to talk about the process of discipleship. Today I want to look into the three areas of what it means to be a disciple. And I want you to compare it to your life. Are you a disciple? And what this really means and how God may or may not uh, use this in your life to, to bring about change. But at this time, all that can stand, please join me by standing. Please stand with me for the reading of God's Word. We find today Acts 11, 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. It came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we embark on this message, we ask the transforming power of the Holy Spirit to rest on us all, our minds and our souls and our hearts. Teach us what it is to be a disciple, to be a disciple of Christ, to follow Him. We ask this blessing, and it is a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Many people today truly do not understand what it means to be a genuine Christian. And that word is batted around out in the world, and, and we do not have a good reputation. That's our fault. We didn't stand up, and it's not too late. But there are multitudes that have followed and are following Jesus that claim to be a Christian, but they do not do it on His terms. They do it on their terms. So they tr truly do not understand and comprehend the biblical definition of disciple. Because of this ignorance, there's many who consider themselves followers of Jesus who are not, even though in many ways they look like followers of Jesus. Uh, there's plenty of people that go to church, profess faith, read Bibles, pray, even give an offerings, but they are not the real deal. They're not living and thinking like the real. Jesus confronts this problem a few times in our text today. He makes it very, very clear what it means to be a Christian. Therefore, there's no reason for anybody to be an ignorant or be self-deceiving today. So we looked at the cost of discipleship last week, how Jesus defined discipleship. I want to explain the word disciple. A disciple is a true follower of Jesus Christ. In other words, what we would call a Christian person. If you're a Christian, you are a disciple of Christ. If you're not a disciple, as Jesus defines it, then you're not a Christian. It's always compared to what Jesus says. These two terms, disciple and Christian, they mean the same thing in the same way. Followers of Christ or to act like Christ. In fact, disciple occurs 269 times in the New Testament alone. The word Christian is found only three times. Book of Acts, we're told in the scripture we just read, the disciples were first called Christian in Antioch. In another verse, in Acts 26, 28, then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Saddest verse in the Bible, one of them, I think. Here's a man that's telling to your face, You almost persuaded me to be a Christian, but you didn't. Then we see the third one in 1 Peter 4.16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glor glorify God on this behalf. There are three sites in the Bible that we just read about the word Christian. Makes it clear. Disciple and Christian are used interchangeably. I want this to be clear as I believe it greatly clarifies the significance of what Jesus is saying. For instance, in Luke 14.27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, come after me, cannot be my disciple. 